So today we're going to talk about, um, or what I did is I, I shifted kind of everything from, from this week, from last week forward a week, or back a week. Um, so I just took the week that we had uh, allocated for the portfolio, and I put that last week. And so I just kind of moved everything else back a week, which means that now we're knocking out an extra week at the end to work just on the portfolio. Um, unless we combine some things and that might happen. Maybe I might condense the two weeks for developments into one week or something like that. Uh, we'll see. And I'll, let you, I'll let, try and let you guys know ahead of time so you know which, which stuff to read for. So today we're going to do intersections of planes. So we have two, two planes hitting. How do we find where they hit? You can barely see that right now. So here's that. So how am I gonna do that? Yeah. Because each one of those lines is gonna be just a regular line piercing through the plane, and you can get the points off of that. Yeah, I can kind of do with the piercing point method that we did two weeks ago with each one of these to find out if that line is crossing through the plane. But what happens if the line isn't crossing through? And it's, somehow it's got to do it somewhere, but you might have to do some trial and error to find it. And that's one of the methods in the book is the piercing point method. So there's, there's three methods. There's the auxiliary view method, which we'll do. Um, there's the piercing point method. Um, which I'm not going to go through, but we've already done most of the steps to it two weeks ago. So if you want to try it, and there's the cutting plane view, cutting plane method, which is good for things that they're intersecting, but they're not touching. Like there are two planes over here, and so you want to find out up here where they would where they would intersect. You can do that. Uh, but we're going to do the auxiliary view method. So. What we want to do is we want to get one of these planes as an edge view, right? So if we have the plane, we're looking at the edge, we can see kind of where it's cutting through the other plane. And then we can project those points back to figure out where, the, where exactly it is. So from here, is there anything I can do to get to an edge view right now? What do I need to have in order to get an edge view? A true length line, right? Do I have any true length lines? Where? Bottom of that green pyramid. Yeah. At the top. This 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 one, right? Yes. So this line is parallel to the folding plane. Yep. So that means that it's true length in this view. Yeah. So now, how do I need to come off of this line? Do I need to come? This way or that way? Probably straight out. Do I need to go perpendicular to it or parallel with it? Parallel. I need to go parallel with it, right? Parallel. So I'm going to draw my little. So I can offset. So UCS, object, that line, folding plane. Right? Get those two points of that green plane. Offset from there to there, there to there. Bring that back, trace that line so I don't get confused. Offset from there to there. Bring that line back. I'm just going to turn this one into my plane. Right? It's going from those two. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing with plane 2. Mixing it up, trying to do the same corner again. This one. Deleted both. Oh, right. Deleted both. And deletes purpose, huh? It's been a long day. So that's this corner. Bring that line back. That is a very skinny plane. I'm going to change it back to the plane too, just so I can keep everything kind of, kind of ordered in my head. So now I can see this is plane one. And I can see it's crossing that plane two there and there. So those are the two points where it has to cross over somehow. That not, those might not be exact points where it's that it's crossing because it, maybe it stops a little before or stops after. But maybe that, those two points now will give me the line of intersection. So now I can come from there back up. And which line is that on? That's on this long line. So it's going to come to that point. Here, the shorter one goes to there. So that's my line of intersection. So, right here, is that an intersection between those two planes? No, why not? Why isn't this little section right here an intersection between the two planes? Because it's outside of the other plane. Yeah, because the two planes are both in that area. So right here, you've got the green and that one. But in here, there's not both planes. So you know that this green plane, so these two only overlap for that much. So that's the only piece they have in common with each other. This part isn't, so I can just kind of get rid of that. Maybe I'll make a new layer. So I can kind of see that, that intersection. Now what do I need to do? Yeah, I need to see what's on top, right? You need to see how those planes are going. There's a real good place to, we have to see that. Right here. Kind of, we, can, we can kind of see that in this part of the plane, the orange, the plane two is on top of that. Then kind of here it gets kind of fuzzy. But you can see that down here, it's below it. So we can kind of see from that, that auxiliary view how it should be a lot easier. So now we're seeing that as an edge, so we can see what's closer, what's further away from it. So we can double check that. <coughs> By going from here and seeing, yes, it does hit that line first. Yes, it does hit that one first. So we do know that the here, the plane two is on top. Same thing here. Zoom in just barely, but plane two's on top. 
And then down here, just barely, but the green plane's on top. So we know down here, green's on top. Here and here, plane two's on top. So that means that this piece right here is kind of below that, which we can see over here. This, this corner of it was below that, that point. So, we're going to kick out that piece. And we could go in and break it, then put it back in. And we're just going to, to we're just going to put on the same layer, then just change the, override the line type for this. So that way we don't, we want to make, we want to still keep that with the layer. Or it could make a, a plane two hit in and a plane one hit in if you wanted to. Um, it's kind of up to how you want to do it. So we know that this corner right here is what's in front. But this piece right here and that piece is behind, right? There, there. That's how it is. If I wanted to see it without the inlines, that's what that looks like. So this plane here, this is where they're intersecting. This is the part that's in front. That's the part. Okay. The questions. If you want to just put the hidden lines on the hidden layer, that way you can turn them on and off. You can do that too. So it's kind of up to you how you want to, to show them. Like I said, you can make a plane one hidden and a plane two hidden to control them on and off by each plane also. It's kind of whatever you want to do. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to project up again to the top view. So we all we know how to do that, right? So I'm going to project, measure my distance from here, because this point right, actually that since that's on that line, I'm going to just project it up, project it up to wherever it hits that line. <coughs> so that's going to hit that line. That's going to hit. So there's my intersection line there. So just figure out visibility again up there. Okay. So same thing there, there, and there. So you only have four today, or, or four. Or three there. Um, this one, don't worry about because we already have the line intersection, right? I was going to combine this week and the stuff that we were supposed to do this week and today. That's why I put this one here. But we're just going to save this for next week when we do the angle between planes. Um, if you want to get ahead, if you want to try and figure out how to measure that angle between the planes, you can do that. Maybe we'll get to it later on if you are real comfortable. Um, there's that. Also, as you go along with that today, we're going to do some intersections with solid objects. So instead of just having planes that are kind of skewed, we're going to have some objects we want to intersect. So here, I've got a triangular shaped piece here, and then a triangular shaped piece hitting it. So how am I going to figure out where these intersect? What's the first step I should probably do up here? Yeah. Predict it all until it hits, right? So what's this point right here? 
Where is that in the front view? Where should it be? What's this point? Where should it be? Okay, where is that point on this triangle? Because this triangle is that, right? This is an auxiliary of this, projected up there. So where where is this line on the auxiliary? Is it one, two, or three? It's one, right? So this point here should be along that edge. Bullet, radius zero, is your friend. And then where does that point connect to? Doesn't it at this point connect to that point? So where is that point in the front view? Do I have it? Where is this point in this view? The tip. This? Yeah, right? Because if I look at the top view, it's hitting right on that corner. So it's right there. So that means that that's just connecting right there, like that. That's just one straight line, one straight line, one straight line. Here I have the same basic thing, but now it's in a circle, not, <laughs> not a triangle. So is it going to be a straight line here now? No. What's it going to be? It's going to be a curve. So, again, extend them out to that circle. That one's still hitting there, so that's fine. This one's hitting here. So I'll just do that to find that corner. And I'll get rid of that. But now I'm going to figure out what that curve is like there. Any ideas? of it. But is that really just an arc? Yeah. No, it'd be more of a spline, right? Because it's not just one radius there. Yeah. Looking at it from the side, it, it changes. So it has like an inch an inch yeah. And so, but this is a kind of a close approximation for it. So this could work. Um, if, I need one, if I needed to be more exact, what would I do? Project more points. So maybe I might say that that's 0.878. So I'll draw a line there. So maybe every 0.2, I draw a line. Maybe this is where I'm going to use my XL. Remember my construction line? So I can just bam, bam, bam. And kind of getting more in here isn't going to do me much, right? Because that's a real sh shallow angle. Or maybe more here if I needed to, because this would give me more points going across. Just because of how the circle is. white lines right now. Don't I? 
and I might get confused with what goes where. So now's the time where maybe I want to start color coding lines. So I want to say that this line is going to be this kind of that purple. This one is going to be kind of that blue. Oh, you guys can't see that though. So I can start picking other colors, and then I can kind of go look like this, and I can use the smash properties right here. So this is the one towards the top of the pyramid. That's the one towards the top. Match them. That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. Now I can say that goes there. So that where they hit the circle, the same color goes down. So purple continues purple, blue continues blue, red continues the red. So now when I come down here, I can easily see that's where the reds intersect, that's where the blues intersect, that's where the purples intersect. So now I can do just do my spline. So SPL. Here, there, there, there. I went back and watched the spot, huh? so that I can keep track of it, right? Keep track, remember that for in a few weeks. Um, and then here, same thing, right? Now I've got two cylinders intersect. So I'm gonna need to divide it this way and then that way and see how it hits. Any questions? So that's, that's our stuff for this week. Here especially, you're going to want to color code. Make sure you keep track of which one is which one so you don't go the wrong way or something like that. And to get in good habits for two weeks we do revolutions. Because then we're going to have like 20 months. So, <clears throat> get in good habits now. Practice, practice doing that. You'll be, not, you'll be glad that in two weeks when we get to develop revolutions, we'll be done with auxiliary views. I'm not. I've sold my